In a modern world dominated by stealth aircraft, it seems surprising that the United States still continues developing a fighter that's as far from this concept as possible. However, the F-15X proves that brute force is by no means an anachronism, but a completely conscious and, most importantly, effective choice. A huge payload, state-of-the-art electronics, and the ability to operate in the harshest conditions make this aircraft an excellent addition to the fleet of fresh F-35 Lightning II stealth aircraft. Today we'll be figuring out how the good old F-15 Eagle managed to burst into the combat arena as one of the best combat fighters of the 21st century. The McDonnell Douglas F-15 Eagle can be safely called an aircraft that appeared in the heat of fierce rivalry between the U.S. Air Force and the U.S. Navy, who fought with each other over the future of American tactical aviation. Back in 1965, U.S. Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara asked the two services to provide a new low-cost tactical fighter for close-range and close-air support that could replace the U.S. Air Force's fleet of North American F-100 Super Sabres and various light bombers. But by July of 1967, a new USSR fighter, the MiG-25, had already been presented during the Domodedovo Air Show, thus intervening in the U.S. plans for the future aircraft. Adding this factor to the recent experience of the Vietnam War, a request for proposals was issued in 1968 to major aerospace companies, requiring them to design a single-seat air superiority fighter with a maximum takeoff weight of 40,000 pounds and a top speed of Mach 2.5. A year later, from the options proposed by the four companies, the Air Force excluded General Dynamics but closed contracts with Fairchild Republic, North American Rockwell and McDonnell Douglas. In the end, McDonnell Douglas emerged victorious with its prototype, which resembled the twin-tailed fixed-wing Grumman F-14 Tomcat. By the time the first production models appeared, the concept of a purely single-seat fighter was abolished. Thus, two options appeared at once, the single-seat F-15 and the double-seat TF-15 which were later renamed F-15A and F-15B. In the future, it was these versions that grew into four main families of fighters. F-15E Strike Eagle, a two-seat all-weather strike version with conformal tanks, which is the basis for the further Advanced Eagle and its derivatives. F-15 Advanced Eagle, development of the F-15E with a modified wing design that allows for the placement of two additional weapon hardpoints under the wing. New cockpit options, advanced radar, new engines, digital joint helmet mounted queuing systems for the pilot, as well as a digital electronic warfare system. The F-15 SE Silent Eagle was an option with a reduced effect of scattering surface due to the replacement of conformal fuel tanks with conformal weapon compartments. The tilt of the two vertical tail fins 15 degrees outward reduced their radar signature, while simultaneously providing the fighter with a slight increase in lift, leveling out the loss of fuel tanks. And of course, today's guest, the F-15EX or Eagle II, represents a new round of evolution of the F-15E model, the advantages of which we'll be covering right now. The idea for the F-15EX arose in the early 2010s when the U.S. Air Force realized it would run short of its fighter fleet by 2020 due to the delayed or scaled back plans to modernize its existing fighters. After all, it would hardly be a secret to anyone that the defense budget had decreased significantly since the end of the Cold War. The same grandiose plans to produce 381 production Lockheed Martin F-22 Raptors in 2009 were replaced by a more modest 187 units. And when the F-35 Lightning II program also faced forced delays, the Air Force took up the issue of seriously updating the F-15 fleet, which was supposed to retire in the mid-2020s. The F-15E family, with its deep strike mission, was a radical paradigm shift from the original F-15 Eagle, designed as an air superiority fighter with a motto, not a pound for air-to-ground attack. But the basic F-15 airframe turned out to be too versatile not to take advantage of this by creating a new effective strike fighter. Additionally, the reorientation to attack ground targets didn't in any way reduce the danger of the F-15E in air confrontation for its enemies. 
The standard F-15E was a modification of the two-seat F-15B that included significant structural changes and two more powerful General Electric F-100 10GE129 turbofan engines with afterburner and up to 29,500 pounds of thrust each. A little later, they migrated to the new F-15 EX fighters, thanks to which single-engine fighters like the well-known F-16 Fighting Falcon or even the newest F-35 Lightning II are unlikely to be able to catch up with the F-15 EX, capable of going up to Mach 2.5. Although, according to the pilots, with weapons and fuel tanks, this figure in combat conditions is unlikely to exceed Mach 2.2. The F-15E design was an export success among customers, so Boeing, which was responsible for it, continued to further rethink it. Even more radical design improvements resulted in the Advanced Eagle family, starting with the F-15 Saudi Advanced for the Royal Saudi Air Force, which first flew in 2013. But due to the stringent efficiency requirements of the Eagle II, the company's engineers again had to carefully reconsider the structure of the wings to more than double their service life from 8,000 to 20,000 hours. For the wings and nose barrel, they used full-size determinate assembly manufacturing technology, which greatly reduced assembly time by transferring drilling to the component manufacturing process. The Eagle II avionics were also not ignored. Integrating it into the BS systems, the EPOS, or Eagle Passive Active Warning Survivability System, completely replaced the previous Tactical Electronic Warfare System and Digital Electronic Warfare System. But the main distinguishing feature of the new generation was the installation of Fly-By-Wire, a system that replaces conventional manual aircraft flight controls with an advanced electronic interface. Yes, someone might rightly note that such a feature is by no means rocket science, but for a fighter aircraft originally from the late 60s, this was indeed an important innovation. Moreover, the change in control system successfully eliminated flutter modes, which had previously led to problems with the stability of the F-15. As a result, two outboard wing pylons could turn off on earlier versions. Other important upgrades included a significantly more powerful Advanced Display Core Processor 2 mission computer and a new cockpit with 10 and 19-inch large area displays for the pilot and weapon systems officer. The large touchscreen display can be customized for each crew member to conveniently display an array of information, including data from the AN-APG-82 V1 ESA radar and the new EPEUSES Electronic Warfare Suite that provides all-aspect radar warning receiver and threat geolocation. Both the pilot and WSO can also use the digital joint-mounted queuing system to aim the weapon at high angles from the line of sight. But one of the strongest arguments in favor of any F-15 compared to its winged colleagues was, is, and still remains the impressive payload. When the original F-15 variants entered service, they carried the largest air-to-air -air payload in a long time. Then, Strike Eagle came along, and this capability expanded significantly over the decades with the addition of precision-guided weapons. The F-15X is no exception and confidently continues the tradition, allowing it to carry up to 12 air-to-air -air missiles in a typical configuration and approximately 30,000 pounds of ammunition for air-to-ground missions. Moreover, using the proposed expanded racks and conformal fuel tank weapon stations, the Eagle II can potentially carry 16 AMRAMs, 4 AIM-9S, and 2 AGM-88 high-speed anti-radiation missiles. And if it's necessary to resolve the issue of additional firepower for the stealthy F-22 Raptor and F-35 Lightning II, then the F-15X can certainly deliver several large pieces of ordnance to the enemy's address. For example, the AGM-158 Joint Air-to-Surface Standoff Missile, or the AGM-183 Air-Launched Rapid Response Weapon for a precision strike. The aircraft can be equipped with 16 small-diameter bombs, four advanced medium-range air-to-air missiles, and one 2,000-pound Joint Direct Attack Munition. In short, you're unlikely to find another such heavily armed aircraft which, with all its colossal load, is also capable of aggressive maneuvering without restrictions on the angle of attack. Shortly after the F-15EX was given the official name Eagle II, the U.S. Air Force announced the purchase of the first 12 fighters at a cost of $1.23 billion or $102.5 million per tail. 
and although its price has subsequently decreased slightly and can now reach a maximum of $97 million per unit, this is still almost $20 million higher than the cost of the new F-35A stealth fighters. But it's important to remember that their goals are completely different. As for the total number of Eagle IIs, the US Air Force intended to form a fleet of 144 such fighters. Then they decided to cut the order to 80 units, and a little later, after carefully counting everything, they came to the conclusion that the optimal required number of such birds should still be increased to 104 units. Moreover, while the American program to create the sixth generation fighter, next generation air dominance, has been put on pause, the US Air Force will definitely need an additional strike force from hundreds of heavily armed F-15 Axes, especially at a time when borders around the world are striving to come into active motion again. Do you think the US Air Force should keep the Eagle II in service until the 2040S given the inexorable approach of advanced fighters? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell for more content like today's. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.